welcome to Navy Paints. In this video, I'll be showing you how I painted up the merchant, the cart, and his pet minotaur in a nice grim dark style. With that, let's crack in. Before painting, the first thing I need to do is undercoat the model. I've gone with Vallejo's Black Surface Primer. I've applied this paint to the model using my airbrush with a little flow improver mixed in. When undercoating, I always go nice and thin with a couple of coats just to make sure I've got nice even coverage over the entire model. The next paint to apply is Shining Silver from the Army Painter, again through the airbrush. With this paint, I don't mix in any flow improver, and I just give the model one light coat of this colour, not worrying if I get it on the wood or the skin areas. Now to work on the Minotaur's skin, this first colour here is Rakarth Flesh from Citadel. With this colour and all future colours, unless I state otherwise, I apply these with two thin coats with a little water mixed in. For the skin on the merchant, it was super easy. It was just a two-step process. First, I base coated the skin with the Rakarth Flesh. Once that was applied, I gave it a coat of Dark Oath Flesh from Citadel. This is one of their contrast paints, and his skin was completed. The next step of the Minotaur's skin is to give it a light wash. I've gone with Biltan Green from Citadel. On the left side of my thumb is the straight Biltan Green, and on the right hand side is the colour I'll be using. It's a watered down Biltan Green, it's about a 60-40 mix. And with this wash, I'm just going over all the skin. The only thing I'm worried about here is major pooling, but a little bit isn't a massive deal. I've applied this colour in two coats, letting the first dry before applying the second. With the wash applied to the skin, it's got a nice green tint to it, so I'm really happy with this. Now it's time to start dry brushing the skin. The two colours I've used are the Rakarth Flesh again, and this time I've used some White Scar from Citadel in the paint. This is done over seven steps. I won't show everyone on camera because it's the same thing over and over again. For the dry brushing, for every step after the first, I just apply a little bit less of the paint to the model. And with each step, I just mix in a little bit more White Scar to lighten up the paint. Okay, that's the skin dry brushed. I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's time to move on to the fur. This first color here is Abaddon Black from Citadel. And with the Abaddon Black, I've just gone around base coating all the fur. With the base black down, now it's time to dry brush and lighten up the fur. And like the skin, I've used White Scar to lighten up the Abaddon Black. The only difference with the fur is for every step of the dry brushing, I just paint a little bit less of the actual fur area. With all the skin and hair out of the way, now it's time to get the base coating down. These first three colours here are all browns. The three browns are Flat Earth from Vallejo, Monster Brown from the Army Painter, and Mornfang Brown from Citadel. These are for the leathers of the clothes and the backpacks, the shields, the timber on the cart, and any other area I might have put brown down. While putting the base coats down, I just chopped and changed between the three browns, just applying them down as I needed. For the rubber on the tyres and the black on the signs, this is Abaddon Black from Citadel. The next four base colours I've gone with are Blue Violet from Vallejo, Army Green from the Army Painter, Corn Red from Citadel, and Cantor Blue from Citadel. And like the previous step with the browns, I've just gone around the model, picking out different areas with these four colours. This next step here is putting on the base coats of the metals. So the three colours I've got here are all from the Army Painter. These are Rough Iron, True Copper, and Weapon Bronze. Unlike all the other paints, with my metallics, I don't mix any water into the paint. The Rough Iron was applied in two coats. The True Copper and Weapon Bronze 
took three to four coats each. These two paints are really horrible to use, so if you've got an alternative, go for it. Through the airbrush, they're great, but painting them on, they're a time-wasting nightmare. The final step of base coating is doing the horns with Talan Sand from Citadel. And the yellow areas are done with Avalon Sunset, also from Citadel. I also painted the Minotaur's mouth and nose with some Centaur skin, but I forgot to record that. To get the hazard stripe effect, I've gone to a bad and black from Citadel, painted this over the areas where I want the stripes to be. I'm trying to be as neat as possible, but I'm not too worried, as any mistakes I can touch up with the yellow. And with the two colours, I just go back and forward, just fixing them up until I was happy. With all the base coating down, the main colour here to fix up is the Shining Silver, so I've just gone around fixing that up, and any other small touch-ups where I might have got paint in the wrong spot, I'll fix those up now. With that all fixed up, now it's time to apply an oil wash to the model. I've done this with three different oil washes. The three different colours are Ivory Black, Burnt Umber, and a mix of Ivory Black and Burnt Umber. The fourth paint one on the screen is just pure White Spirit for cleaning my brush. The oils used are all from Van Gogh, and the White Spirit is from Windsor & Newton. Before applying the wash, I gave the entire model a coat of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish. I applied the varnish first, just so I can protect the paint from any tears that might happen later. I've added a lot of White Spirit to the paint to really thin it out, as I want a nice thin wash that'll run into all the cracks and crevices as I'm using it just to stain the model and not paint it. With the black wash, I've gone over the majority of the model, so this includes the barrel, all the metal areas, all the chains, and the entire minotaur. With the burnt umber, I've gone over all the wood, the leathers and shields on the cart, also the leather and the horns of the minotaur. And with the 50-50 mix of the ivory black and burnt umber, I've applied this to the merchant. Once I'd finished applying the oil wash, I hit it with a hairdryer until all the white spirit was dried out. With the white spirit dried out, I let the model sit for half an hour, and using a Q-tip with a little white spirit on it, I just rolled these back and forward over the model. Removing the paint with a Q-tip leaves all the wash in the cracks and crevices, and removes the majority of the paint off the surface. This will also stain the paint, which is great. For the hard to reach areas where I couldn't get to with the Q-tip, I just had a bit of white spirit on a paintbrush and got in there with that. Once I was happy with the amount of oil paint I've removed, I let the model dry for 24 hours. With that dried, now it's time to weather up the model. This first step here is to sponge on the battle damage and scratches. So to apply the paint to the model, I've torn off a couple of little squares of kitchen sponge for each of the colours. The five colours I used to sponge on were Weapon Bronze and True Copper from Nami Painter, Abaddon Black and Lead Belcher from Citadel, and Flat Earth from Vallejo. With these five colours, I just went around the model applying the different weathering and damage. To apply the weathering, it's simple, just put a little bit of the paint on your sponge, like dry brushing, remove most of it from the sponge, and then simply just dab it onto the area you want to apply it to. It's better to go slowly and build it up over time, than go too heavy and not be happy with the amount you've put down. The only two colours that were of note here are the brown and the black. The brown was applied to any area where I put the weapon bronze and true copper, and with the black, once I'd put that down, I went over the top of that with some lead belcher. And these scratches were applied only to things that were metal on the model. Everything else I avoided. The next step is applying a wash to the model. This will go over the entire model. This is Oiled Earth from Vallejo. When applying any of these further colours, I vary up the amount of water I put in the paint. So it can be anything from pure paint all the way through to a couple of drops of paint in a lot of water. Doing this will help me vary up the stains and finishes I get on the model. With the Oiled Earth, I give the entire model a coat of this colour. The only thing I don't cover is the Minotaur skin. Now onto the next colour, this is Rust Texture from Vallejo. With this colour, unlike the Old Earth, I'm not going over the entire model. This is only placed on areas where the sponging was done earlier. And the same as the Old Earth, mixing in different amounts of water with the paint will give me varying results at the end. One thing to note with this colour is I like to apply the paint in an area, let it dry fully, and then sometimes come back to it with a different amount of paint. Doing this really varies up the results I'm getting. And the final weathering paint is Dry Rust from the Ami Painter. I've applied this in the same way as the previous two steps, but a lot more sparing with the paint.
Now for something different, I attempted to paint some veins onto the Minotaur. While not great, I'm pretty happy with the end results, but I think in the future I can tweak them a little bit more. The two paints I used were Corn Red and Cantor Blue, both from Citadel. And I mixed quite a lot of water into the paint. This is about a 70-30 mix of water to paint. With the Corn Red, I just go around painting all the red veins in first. Once I had the Corn Red down, I then came in with the Cantor Blue and did the same thing. With those veins applied, I had a nice juiced up Minotaur. For the eyeball of the Minotaur, it's super easy. It's just straight white scar from Citadel. This is applied with two coats. For the lenses on the Minotaur and the Merchant, it's the same white scar paint. Once the white dried, I gave it a coat of Tesseract Glow from Citadel. Then I gave the lenses a coat of Gloss Varnish from the Ami Painter, and they were done. I've decided to add some dried up blood to the Minotaur's weapons. The two paints I used were Blood for the Blood God from Citadel and Rust Texture from Vallejo. With these two paints, I also mixed in a little bit of water and I slowly built it up over the weapons, applying a few coats until I was happy. For the writing on the signs, this is White Scar from Citadel with a little bit of water mixed into the paint. I'm not worried at all about being neat, as I guess this merchant would just be scribbling this on with paint or chalk or whatever he can get his hands on. To add some dust around the tyres, the legs of the cart, and the feet of the Minotaur Merchant. I've gone to three pigments, Russian Earth and Medium Rust. They're both from MIG. And the third pigment is Desert Dust from Vallejo. The first pigment I apply is Russian Earth. I apply quite a lot of this pigment dry to the model. And using an old paintbrush, I just spread it out over the model, getting some nice dusty areas and some dust gathering in the crevices. The next color is Desert Dust. I'm very sparing with the application of this color as it's a bright pigment and I don't really want it to dominate. And the last pigment to go down is medium rust, and this only goes onto the metallic areas. Once I got my pigment down, I sealed it in with Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish. With the pigment on, the final thing to do is paint the merchant's base with a baton black from Citadel. And with that, the model's painted and ready for the tabletop. Thanks for watching Navy Paints. If you liked the video, please click the sub button or leave me a like. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya.